Today's lesson is on simple interest. First, let's go through some definitions. So the interest is the amount of money that we get paid for lending or investing money, or that we pay for borrowing money. And we denote this as I for interest. The principal is the initial amount of money uh, deposited or borrowed, and we denote that as P, a lowercase p. Rate or interest rate is the charge for interest given as a percentage, assumed to be per year and denoted as R, lowercase r. Uh, simple interest, and that's the interest we're going to be working on today, is the interest calculated only on the principal. And it is only calculated once. So you're only going to accrue the principal at the end of the term, and you collect that interest, and then that's it. So you don't actually earn interest on the interest if you're accruing more frequently. But we will uh, talk about that when we're doing compound interest in another lesson. There is a formula for the interest. It's interest equals principal times rate times time, or simpler I equals PRT. So for our first example, it says find the simple interest owed for the money, for the use of this money. So P is $180, R is 4%. Now we're going to change 4% into a decimal, 0 0.04. And T time is always in years, so T is just equal to 2. So when I'm trying to find the interest, I use I equals PRT. So I is equal to the principal, which is 180, times the rate, which is 0 0.04, times the year, which is 2. So now I've got my calculator, and I'm going to take 180 times the 4% as a decimal, which is 0 0.04 times the years, which is 2. That turns out to be 14.4, which means $14.40 of interest for the two years on the $180. So next I'm going to do a student took out a simple interest loan for $2,400 for two years at a rate of 7%. What is the interest on the loan? So in this case, it's a little trickier because you have to come up with um, all of the values yourself, whereas the last one we, we told you what the values were. So we have I, P, R, and T. It says, what is the interest? So we don't know what the interest is. I'm going to put a little question mark next to the I. P is the principal. That's the how much we started with. So I'm borrowing $2,400, so that's my P. My R is the rate, which is 7%. If I write that as a decimal, that's 0 0.07. And the time in years is two years. It's a little tricky because it's written out in English, and you don't actually see the, the number there, but that's, that is your number. So when I plug this in, I'm going to get I equals P, which is 2400, times my rate, which is 0 0.07, times my time, which is 2. Go to my calculator, I got 2400 times 0 .7, 0 0.07 times 2, and that turns out to be $336 of interest which is a whole lot more because we started with a whole lot more money. So we're going to end up having to pay a whole lot more money, plus my interest rate is higher, so we're going to accrue more interest. Our next example says you deposit $3,000 in a savings account, which has an interest rate of 6%. Find your interest at the end of the year. So we need to find I, P, R, and T. So the I is the interest rate. Well, it says find your interest rate, so clearly I don't know what that is. I'm going to put a question mark on that one. P, that starts with $3,000, that's what I'm going to deposit in my savings account. My rate is 0 0.06, and the time, that one's a little tricky. You're going to find the time right here at the very end. It says find your interest at the end of the first year. 
so first year, so I have only one year, so t is equal to 1. When I plug this in, I have i is equal to p, which is a 3,000, times my rate, which is a 0.06, times 1. So I'm going to clear out that. I'm going to try 3,000 times 0 0.06 times 1. And that gives me 180. So we have $180 of interest over the first year um, on our deposit of $3,000 with a uh, with an interest rate at 6%. Now, we're going to talk about future loan. When a loan is repaid, the interest is added to the original principal to find the total amount due. Essentially, principal plus interest equals total amount due or future value. For the example above, the principal was $3,000. So the one we just did had a principal of $3,000. And at the end, we found out that we had $180 worth of interest. So at the end of the year, the account will have $3,000 from my de original deposit plus $180 that I got from interest. So that gets me a total of $3,180. And that is what the future value of the account is. So if I had deposited $3,000 today, I know at the end of my first year, I'm going to have $3,180 due to the added interest. So that's what future value means. It means what's going to happen after I get my interest, or what do I owe after I pay my interest. So future value is the value of the account at the future time, or principal plus interest. And we're going to denote this with A. So A is equal to P plus I. The principal, or the initial value of the count, is denoted capital P. Well, we're talking about present value. So if we're trying to differentiate between what the value is going to be in the future versus what the value is now, we use A for future value and capital P for present value. It also makes sense because uh, P is also used for principal for lowercase, which is basically the same thing. So if we're using this simple interest, we have A is equal to P plus I. Now, we know the interest, we have the formula for interest, and the interest is P R T. So if I replace, instead of I, we replace it with P R T, then I have a P in both of them. So what I can do is I can factor out the P, and if I divide the P by both of them, that gets me 1 plus RT. Now, if you haven't done factoring in a really long time, it's probably not that important that you know how to factor in this class, but that's how we, we factored, and that's how we got our future value formula of A equals P times the quantity, or that means parentheses, 1 plus RT. And that is the future value with simple interest at an, a rate of R for T years. Um, for future value.